If I can have everyone's attention, we'll get started with our post-race press conference following the AdvoCare 500 here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We are welcomed by Jeff Gordon, driver of the number 24 DuPont Chevrolet, who finished second in tonight's race. Jeff, talk a little bit about your run out there tonight. Oh, man, what a, what a battle. You know, you know going into this race that uh, it's going to be a fight. You know, the, the track is just so slick and... and you know your car has a lot of grip for about five laps and then all of a sudden it just starts going sideways and we just never could get my car tight enough um you know on the short runs we were really fast which you know worked to our favor here uh to get that second place and almost that win and yeah i'm just mad at myself right now um i don't know i guess i'm just getting soft in my old age i'm i'm too nice because I don't know, 15 years ago, I'd have just moved him right up the racetrack. I don't know why I didn't do that, you know. And I thought I could get to his quarter panel and, and kind of slow him down and stay there. But I got there. I just carried too much speed into three, and, and it pushed up the racetrack. And, man, this team is just, you know, I'm so proud of how hard they fought, you know, through this whole season. And um, we know how bad we need that win. So it's pretty disappointing to, to come up short like that. Joining Jeff is Brad Keselowski, driver of the number two Miller Lite Dodge, who finished third in tonight's AdvoCare 500. Brad, talk a little bit about your run out there. Yeah, just a solid night uh, where we had uh, a car that uh, you know was a pleasant surprise. I uh, thought after practice we weren't going to be uh, all that competitive, but once again the uh, the two team, everybody on it stepped up, made some great changes this morning to uh, to get us where we uh, we just had a strong, consistent night. Uh, you know, running fifth or sixth or wherever that was, and. Uh, just proud of that effort. Uh, certainly would, would like to win, <laughs> but, uh, you know, sometimes you just come up a little bit short and we just need a little bit of speed. Quite honestly, I felt bad for Martin. It looked like he had this thing won and a yell came out. But, uh, you know, that's racing. So sometimes you get to break, sometimes you don't. But uh, either way, a, a great race that, uh, you know, I'm proud to say we're able to, to quench our spot in the chase with. Uh, and we'll move on to Richmond and have fun. I know I'm going to have a blast at Richmond with no pressure. I'm going to have fun watching yeah, Jeff say, and – Jeff and sure Carl. And you're going to be enjoying the <laughs> yeah. evening. It's going to be a good race, man. I'm a T-Bill. Oh, yeah. It's going to be intense. <laughs> but uh, Don't get in front of me on the last lap. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would have thought today, man. It's not going to happen twice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just uh, you know, thrilled with how our season has gone and feel like we're carrying some you know, very strong uh, momentum into the chase. I mean, how I hate to talk about this too much because the next week and a half, that's about I'm going to get that question 100 times. But uh, – just uh, really proud of our night. All right, we'll open up for questions for Brad and Jeff. Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start right in the middle with George. Yeah, Jeff, George Diaz with the Orlando Sentinel. I guess you're kind of intimating maybe next week it's uh, boys have added rules in terms of you and the handful of other guys trying to qualify. Oh, absolutely. You know, I mean, that race is always intense. Um, you know, I, I've – been a part of it where you know I, I, I've either been trying to get in like this or you know trying to stay in the chase and, and you know there's there's so much on the line trying to win the race and um, it, that race is always intense but when, when you look at how many guys have to win um, the points and everything else uh, I mean it, it, it's it's gonna be a pretty crazy night you know and we we, uh, we got a lot of pressure on us um, so we're going to be going there, guns loaded and, and ready to do battle. And, you know, I mean, just like we, what we did tonight, we're just going to fight all the way to that last lap. It's just short tracks a little bit different than mile and a half. You know, uh, I think everybody expects there to be a little more pushing and shoving on the short track. So, uh, that, that's definitely going to ramp up the intensity. Okay. Additional questions for Jeff or Brad. Okay. We'll take one from Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, USA Day for Brad. If I can interrupt your yeah, yeah, don't reading let us for a second. That, that, that program must be riveting. Interesting program. Yeah, yeah, look at this picture of this Hooters girl, man. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> you, you came in here, Brad, tied with, with Tony and Jimmy and Denny uh, with three wins as potential number one seed. Now, Denny wins here tonight. He's guaranteed at least being the number one seed for the chase, and he's going to Richmond where you, you think – Danny Hamlin's usually pretty good there. But as a guy who's right up there with him in that, that seating battle, how do you, how do you kind of handicap that going to Richmond now? And, and what does it mean, I guess, for Danny Hamlin to have two straight wins and to have that kind of momentum and potentially be the, the number one seed? 
it's just one of those things you can be proud of. Um, I think when the chase, uh, you know, gets going, those bonus points are nice, but they certainly don't guarantee anything. Uh, you know, four wins is the equivalent of, you know, 12 finishing spots throughout the chase. So, you know, I, that, that does buy a little over one bad uh, or one position in every race in a chase, which is something, but it's nothing to write home about. Um, you know, so at the end of the day, you still have to perform in the chase. And uh, I'm sure Danny knows that. I know that. I know the three wins that we have. Uh, they just make you feel good and give you something to beat your chest about. But uh, at the end of the day, you still have to perform in the chase. Uh, and you still have to be consistent. Uh, and he's in great standing, obviously, like you said. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's going to have to fight just like everybody else in the chase. And so are we. Okay, we'll take it to the press box for questions for Brad and Jeff. For Jeff, Monty Dutton from the Gaston Gazette. A lot of times track position makes things uh, – Difficult to read when you're following a lot of the thing. Did you have a performance boost? Did your car get a lot better late, or was it just a matter of getting in the position where you could show it? Well, our, our car all night was strong in the short runs and just not good on the on the long runs. Um, so you know, we we came in, we took tires. I mean, there's what only ten cars or nine cars on the lead lap. You know, we came in and put tires on, put enough fuel, to make sure we could make it to the end there. We made some adjustments, and I got a really good restart, you know, on the outside. Not not talking about that last round. I'm talking about when we got up into second. I mean, we, we had a half a lap on the tires, and we came in, in of green, right? Half a lap, then those caution laps. We came in and got four tires and started outside and drove from whatever, you know, we were eighth or whatever to second. That, I mean, that's how important tires are here in track position and being in the right lane on the restarts. Um, we had a good car on the, on the short runs, but we just didn't have it on the long runs. But we were maintaining, you know, unless and, and, and Martin ran out of fuel, you know, we were pretty much going to finish second. But actually, actually that, that caution was the best thing that could happen for us. That was really, to me, the only thing that gave us a shot to win. I, I thought we, uh, you know, if we get a good restart getting that outside lane, I, I thought we could get – uh, even Hamlin, I thought we were better than him on the on the restarts, and and you know, I, I mean, I I got a little bit too tight, but we had the run, we we had it, you know, and just didn't didn't do enough with it going down the back straightaway. Additional questions from the press box. A question for Jeff Gordon, Wolfgang Munzer, Rangeport Press Agency. Uh, Jeff, around lap 190 or 200, you were running together with your teammate Jimmy Johnson. Was this part of the strategy that you helped each other to gain positions at that time? You have to, to explain. Or you explain that one to Wolfgang, me. Wolfgang, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, um, Jeff, around lap 190 or 200, you were running behind uh, Jimmy Johnson. I think you were seventh or eighth, and Jimmy were in front of you, and uh, in front of Jimmy was Sam Hornish. Was it part of your strategy helping each other to gain positions? We weren't doing a very good job of it. If that was a strategy, no, there's no strategy there. The strategy, you know, on a track like this is to get your car working the best that you can. I mean, w the teams share information on, on pit road of what adjustments each team is making to maybe help or hurt, you know, their, their car. But, uh, uh, you know, w w I, I felt like neither one of us were really very good, not good enough to win. So I guess the answer is no. Okay, we have no more questions in the press box. Any final questions? Okay, we'll take one right here in the middle, Mike. Mike Neff from frontstretch.com. This is for either of you guys. We've had a couple, three instances lately of one lane being obviously stronger on restarts than the other, and it may not even be the lane that is the, the primary lane when the race is going on. Can you explain how the grip can be that much different that close? in two lanes that close to each other? Well, I don't know if that's anything new. I mean, when the tires are new and they have a lot of grip, if your car's, you know, working well, you run around the bottom until the grip gives up. So, um, you know, that's why you see guys running around the bottom for a few laps. But, I mean, I, I was shocked. I mean, Hamlin, uh, Kyle Busch, uh, you know, other than Martin and, and maybe myself and a couple others, I was I was very surprised those guys were able to run a lower lane tonight. 
um, even even on the long runs. Of course, down in three and four, the bottom lane is the only lane. It's a preferred lane all the time because you hook that paint down there. But you don't really – you kind of have that in one, too, but not really. But, no, it's, it's just because there's so much grip in the tires. The shortest way around is, is almost always the best and fastest way around, and it just, just makes it hard – to uh to make that outside lane work you know this is not a progressive bank racetrack so if you have progressive banking uh maybe you have a shot at, at carrying a little more momentum on that outside but you gotta you gotta carry a lot more speed on the outside here on this first couple laps after a restart if you're gonna make any ground up on a guy's got fresh tires final question for brad or jeff nate follow up oh i'm sorry seth SethLivingstoneNASCAR.com. Jeff, it's been an awful long time since you've won at Richmond. Um, tell, tell me over the last 10 years or so, has the track changed? Has your philosophy changed? Has the competition gotten that much better? Why has it become so much more difficult to win at Richmond? Well, I mean, it's always hard to win no matter where you go. Um, we've had cars capable, not the last time we were there, <laughs> but uh, last year we actually had a car capable of winning. Uh, Kenseth wrecked us one time, and, and then... Uh, can't remember what what happened in the other one, but I mean, we've 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 had cars in, in the last couple years that have been good enough to win. So, you know, we we've already been talking about Richmond in our debriefs about the things that we can do to to improve our performance. The last time we were there, we just completely flat out missed the setup last time we were there, trying some new stuff, and it didn't work. So we'll go back with um, a little bit more conventional, uh, typical for us, and then you know try to try to improve on it from there, and and you know see how the the race unfolds. But I I think we c I mean we know Kyle is going to be tough there. We know this other guys are going to be tough there. But I I think we can mix it up with him pretty good. Nate. Uh, following up on that, Jeff, uh, we're trying to crunch the numbers here. It looks like it's going to be pretty much you versus Kyle, and uh, you're going in there 12 points behind him, so that pretty much means you're going to have to win. It would be tough, I think, to finish 12 positions ahead of uh, Kyle at Richmond. Uh, does it make it easier, though, for you that it's it's pretty much just probably going to be just down to the two of you for, for one spot? Well, you don't want to have to go beat Kyle Busch <laughs> at Richmond. He's pretty pretty strong there. But I, I think we're really going to just focus on our own program like we always do. You know, we focus on tuning the car, communicating, and working the setup the best we possibly can and try to have the fastest race car out there. And if you, we can do that, you know, then, then we try not to make any mistakes um, driving on pit road and pit strategy. If we don't have the fastest car, then we got to switch it up and – you know, puts a little more pressure on the crew chief or maybe even on me if we try some tire strategy, you know, fuel mileage strategy, whatever we, we do track position-wise. But you, you can't predict any of those things, you know. You just got to go out there and race. You got to race hard. I don't think – I'm not going into it thinking that we got to finish whatever 12 positions ahead of, of Kyle. You know, I'm, I'm thinking we got we to gotta win. And if we don't make it, as long as we put our best, you know, effort forward – we didn't make it, and then we go try to win races in the final 10. Guys, congratulations on your run tonight. Thank you for your time.